Hey y'all, it's Christy Cook with Tea Doddles and it's time for uh, the last tutorial for my baby clothes quilt. Um, this is going to be more about a uh, talk about how I constructed the blocks and put everything together. As you can see, the quilt is finished, thank goodness, because I was very tired of looking at it. It is, woo, it was a very trying quilt <laughs> to actually quilt once I got the whole top together. Um, quite a bit of work went into this and I'm very glad it's done. I think it turned out really cute. Um, and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about how I put all these pieces together. Um, the first two videos I did were about mostly about cutting out things, the different things. and. There is a blog post coming out uh, today as well that will uh, have more details and more pictures if you'd like to check that out. Um, okay, so first let's just start about how I constructed the panels in this quilt. I did not use any interfacing in this quilt and there's some areas that I wish I had of. had some wrinkles and ripples but it um, Otherwise, because I used a knitting foot, uh, it, it worked a lot better than trying to use a straight stitch with a regular foot or a walking foot. Walking foot sometimes can stretch knit fabric really bad um, if you're just sewing it together. Uh, I prefer to use the knit foot, which is uh, similar to a walking foot. I'll put a pick in here. To, so you can see what that looks like. It has a little bar at the top that, that rubs against the uh, the bar on your machine and it kind of holds it back so that it pulls about the same as the, the, the feed dogs underneath. Um, and it's a smaller foot too. It's not so bulky as a walking foot. Um, when, I, when I started laying this quilt out, I, I, as you can see I have panels. I have put these borders, which is the Kona cotton. I purchased uh, a half jelly roll of two and a half inch strips to do borders. And that's what these orange strips are. Um, so as I went along and did this, I, I laid out a, a panel that's about 17 inches tall. Uh, and it just went the width of the, of the quilt, basically. Um, this is a queen size quilt, so it's very large. Um, it's quite, it's got some weight to it, especially since it has all this knit fabric on it. Um, so what I would do is just start picking out, like for this, for this side, I, I started with the, this is a pair of shorts that I cut out and I just cut it so that it would be kind of square in the, in the panel. And I left the little pockets. Uh, these on the front are not real pockets, but right here you can see how I pleated where the, the crotch seam would be in the shorts. Um, and I just stitched on top to close that up so that it wouldn't be a hole into the quilt. Um, now this next piece is actually a cotton piece. It's a seersucker checked type fabric. Um, and my tip for sewing knit to cotton is to make sure the cotton is on the bottom of your when you lay them together uh, because the feed dogs will pull more um, and and you don't want the stretchy part on the bottom because it doesn't since both sides won't be stretching you'll have less ripples in your uh, your seams and everything if you put the cotton non stretchy fabric on the bottom when you sandwich them together to sew them. Um, you can, now I did notice with using the knit foot that I was able to reverse this sometimes and still have good results. It really depended on the knit. Uh, some of these knits are heavier weight and not as stretchy. Um, so, but I, the general rule of thumb is to keep the non-stretchy fabric on the bottom beside the feed dogs. Uh, it, it really helps that go through for quick much easier and you have less stretching and you can you can see what's happening with your knit fabric if it starts to pucker or something like that. Um, 
So as I went along, I would sew these up and then I would I would make little blocks within the the panel, right? And then I would trim them up and sew them together to the next block. And that's how I went along down the panel. And you can also see this little sheer portion here. I layered it on top of a plain planer knit fabric so that I could keep that in here. This is off a little fancy dress of some kind that she had. Um, and you can see here, right here, you can, I'm sure you can see that little bumps and puckers from where I quilted it. Um, this has a seam in this little piece. This is one of the hexagon shaped pieces I cut out and I just stitched uh, along the edge because these, these seams these edges won't fray because they are knit. They'll just roll over once this is washed. This hasn't been washed yet. Um, but you can see how this kind of puckered right here. And that's because there was too much play between this back portion and this. And that's sometimes that's unavoidable in a quilt like this when you have so many different kinds of materials coming together. Um, you really don't notice things like that unless you're just looking directly at it and focused in on it. Um, because the background of this are the two and a half inch strips I cut of all the other fabrics and I sewed them into little blocks and I put things like this on top of it. Uh, so this is a fleece and this is a knit and a fleece and a knit, which a fleece does usually tend to have stretch to it. It usually stretches in one direction and does not have as much stretch as a jersey knit would. Um, so and we'll just keep going along here and see some of the other little details and things that I did. Um, right here you can see where I layered again this piece on top of this gray jersey and I just stitched right along here on this edge and then this lacy part, portion is still part of the quilt now and I just sometimes I layered things like that much like I layered this piece and you can see I left some open like this because it's just fun little things when uh, the little girl that gets this quilt she'll it's almost like a it's almost like a fidget a large fidget quilt or something because it's just got all fun little details that I think little kids would find fun to to have a quilt like this um, so this one I later it layered it on top of this other piece and then sewed the seam and flipped it over and then it got caught in this seam up here and this seam down here. And so you still have this pocket and you can see the other fabric behind it. But you still have this fun little little pom-pom um, trim detail. And this is kind of a sheer fabric. So it needed that extra behind it. Um, up here, this these were cut off of one of my other videos. I talked about cutting some denim shorts. And this is a little patch of the denim short. And I, when I sewed this... I left this hanging out of the seam and then I just stitched down on top of it versus putting it in the seam. So it hangs down over here and you still get to see that fun detail um, of the frayed edge of the short. Uh, and it just gives you lots of texture and fun bits in the quilt. Uh, this is a little portion. These two things came off the same article of clothing. And this was a little trim that was on the edge of the skirt, and I just cut it into a strip and sewed it right in there, just like that. Um, we keep going down the quilt. This is very large, hard to move around. But uh, you can see this little corduroy piece that had a ruffle. It was cut into a two-inch strip, and I sewed it right in there. This is one of my zippered uh, pieces that I cut up in, in one of my the first video, I think. Um, and you can see that now the zipper works and I hand stitched the back to that. I may want to go over that again, but it, you can just see that little lining back there and it still works and zips and it's just a fun little part of the quilt. And I, when I stitched, when I quilted this, I just did very wide line quilting straight across the quilt because trying to do any free motion quilting or turning on this quilt was near impossible. For one thing, free motion quilting on knit is never fun because it really bunches badly. Uh, for another thing, I sewed this on my 
just my home sewing machine. I do not have a free arm uh, sewing machine. So trying to turn a queen size quilt <laughs> in that is, is not fun. <laughs> Especially since this did not roll very flat because of all the, the extra details on it. Uh, so I couldn't roll it up and tuck it as easily. So it, it was a chore to quilt just the straight lines. Um, and I did, when I sewed this together, I used a 3.5 stitch um, because of all the different fabrics I had. And I also used a heavy duty knit needle in my sewing machine. Because even though all of this is not knit, I had mostly knit fabrics and some heavier uh, fleece, which tends to work like a knit. Um, and that just helped me get over any little bumps and all these thick, any areas, much easier. Um, I will also say that when you're sewing something like this and you come to heavier places in the quilt, just slow down when you go over those seams and those bumps. Don't sew super fast. This is not a quilt that you're gonna whip together in an afternoon, okay? I've put many, many hours into this quilt just cutting these pieces and putting them together. Um, so this is something that, that is, should be done a little bit over time. And I really waited to the last minute to do this. So that is why I'm so tired of looking at this quilt because I spent way too many late evenings working on it because I put it off to the last minute. But, um, so let's just keep moving down the quilt. And you can see that I've used any squares I cut out of decals and stuff in with the two and a half inch strips. And I have them going different ways. I didn't keep them all going the same way. Um, this is a very patchy, uh, scrappy kind of quilt. Uh, and this is the top to a pair of overalls that I received. And I decided, I opted not to use the straps in this. I just sewed the buttons directly to the top of the quilt. And this does unbutton still. So this could unbutton and, you know, you can see what's behind it. Um, Again, just another fun detail for the quilt. Um, this is one of the hats that I cut out before. And I debated about sewing over the top of that. And, and just not, not doing it like I did here. But I decided to go ahead and sew over the top. But you can still put your hand down in that pocket. And, you know, it's all... Uh, it's still fabric behind there. But that, that's one of the hats that I sewed down that I showed in my, a previous video. Here's a... A ruffle that was on the back of a like a little sleeper and um, again I just cut it to inch strip and I sewed it right in there uh, let's let's move on down the quilt I still got strings on this this needs to be washed still uh, this was on the top of uh, um it was like a little strappy onesie it had these straps the bows on it um, and so I took those off and I just zigzag stitched on each end and I put them right there on that other two and a half inch strip. So it's just a little, it's just, that's, that's a way to keep all those trims and stuff that are really cute that make, make little kids clothing so cute. Um, you can just zig, do a wide zigzag over it just like that and attach it to the quilt. Um, now see sometimes I had some shirts and things that the the image went up if I cut this off it would really take away from this little giraffe scene going on here so I just put some fabric to fill in the little corner and zigzagged right on top of it some of these I just straight stitched um, it just depends on the look I was going for um, so it it, it uh it just fills in that little corner and lets me keep more of this decal instead of having to cut that off if I cut it off even with these corners, which is where the arms were. Um, we'll move on down. This is the um, little heart that I cut out in the previous video. It has the little zipper decal, detail, right, with the panel behind it. Um, and then there's another little, just any little thing like this, any place that looked too plain. I just sewed little things like this on that I cut off all the fabrics. There's another hexagon one with an owl. Um, 
keep going down. We're almost to the other end. And this little bow, I hand sewed that bow on there. Uh, it has a lot of knit left on the back of it, you can see, because it, uh, that just wasn't coming off of there easily. So I cut, trimmed it down as much as I could and just hand sewed that on there. Um, so you can see that um, I need to find some other little details, but I want to talk about this uh, border. This this is a, a like a border plus the uh, oh the word won't come to me right now binding for this quilt, and these are I cut all of the leggings that were in that box. They were all I was able to get five inch wide strips out of all of the leggings. So that gave me two five inch strips per legging. And I I just put them in an order and then I started over again with the, the second pair. And all I did was fold it in half and iron it and, and fold it over the front and the back and stitched it down. I didn't even tuck this under because again this is knit. It's not going to ravel. It'll curl up and just give it even have, be more fun and have more texture to it once it's washed. Um, and the ones the, that had ruffles at the bottom, I overlapped it and stitched this way instead of tucking it under. Um, and I had, again this is a queen size quilt, I'm not sure of the exact measurements, it has about a 12 inch drop at the feet and probably four inches, four to six inches on each side drop. So I had enough leggings to go completely around the quilt and I had one, one five inch strip left. So one half of one legging left. <laughs> That's how many leggings were in that box, those boxes. Um, so I just wanna, let's see. And, and then I also had some they had little bows on it, and sometimes that got on the back of the quilt. Sometimes it was on the front. Uh, but I just think that's really cute. Uh, and I had one. This is a zipper one that I kept, and then I realized that's a string I need to cut because I didn't sew across the zipper. But this one won't unzip because I cut it out and left the zipper on the wrong end. So, But it, it's still a cute little detail. And I still got to go through and cut some strings off of this. But um, here's one where it was a front, front placket. The, the one I showed before with the little straps, this one has, uh, this was the front placket of that. And I just cut a two inch strip and sewed it right into with the other strips. Um, let's see, what else? There's an, another pair of shorts. Uh, oh, here's some ruffles. Uh, I had there was lots of ruffles. I did not use all of the ruffles because some of it was netting. I do have one area that has some netting ruffles on it, but any of them that were too heavy or poofy, uh, I felt it would weigh the quilt down too much and just be too much of a difference from the rest of the quilt. Um, I also didn't wind up using the blue jean uh, overalls because they were so much heavier than anything else on this quilt and I think it just really would have been just heavy in one place. Um, but this, I just cut it and I squared it up and just sewed it right into the quilt, just like everything else, right? Just You just keep the ruffles, and I sewed the fabric behind the ruffles down so then the ruffles are still there. So, um, let's see, what else? Oh, here's some more overalls. So these overalls, I decided to keep the straps I sewed them down here and I sewed this panel into this seam and I did zigzag stitch along this edge um, to hold it down but these do still come open so you can it can be opened and and played with and put back um, and that was I had several pairs of overalls with little straps and I did different things for each one um, and then I also when I was laying this out, I had I tried to put group things together that seemed to go together. Like I had a lot of Christmassy outfits or 
holiday outfits. Um, I'll get to those panels in a minute, but I, I tried to group them into things that kind of went together. It just made it easier to piece everything and try to get a little bit of everything I had. I still have almost a container full of strips and other things that did not make it into this quilt because <laughs> I just it could not get any bigger. <laughs> but um oh sorry bumped the camera holder. So this was actually the first one I started with and this was a little outfit. It had the top of the mermaid on the shirt and the bottom of the mermaid on the shorts. So I wound up cutting the shorts and sewing a diagonal seam across here so that I could have the bottom half. And I put this strip in here because it doesn't match up exactly right because I had to cut some things out like the waistband. Uh, but it kind of looks like she's just sticking her butt out or something. Um, and again, I used my trick at the top for uh, to fill in the gap left where the sleeve was so I could keep all of this in the panel. Um, and then this next one is a piece of fleece off of a sleeper. And I sewed this on top. And I did quilt right over some of these. It depended on what was going on. Like this little birdie, I quilted underneath his wing so his wing could still move up and down. Um, and this one, if, if it was a fabric that would fray, I did a zigzag stitch around the edge. But for the knits, I mostly did... Um, straight stitching uh, just to save some time plus zigzagging on going around a curve and zigzagging on knit is never <laughs> an easy task because things like to move around too much um, let's see what else can I oh this this one on the end here this was a, a dress that had uh, lace on the bottom so when I sewed the side piece I didn't sew across the portion with the lace and then I flipped it out and tucked these ends under and then stitched across that so then I could have the lace still hanging out over onto the border um, it was just trying to keep as much detail as I could uh, let's see then we got this was a little flirty flowy ruffly dress this took a little bit of doing to get this in here I had to cut it and because it had layers I stitched around the edges before I put it into the quilt um, and I did wind up going ahead and stitching over it when I did my um, quilting just to hold that in place a little more and now I'm seeing that I may have missed an end that I need to stitch over it didn't get caught in the seam um, which is why I like to wash these things before I give it to anyone to make sure anything like that is fixed and you'll also notice that I had quite a bit of ruffling in this I'm trying to get it up under the camera right in this um, border I don't know what happened this one on the side it, it was bowed way out and in order to get it to come back in, I had to do this. But I think that it looks okay in the quilt because you have so many ruffles and everything in there anyway. It just looks like it's it's supposed to be there. And I don't look for perfection when I make quilts because usually the people that I give these to don't notice those things. <laughs> I'm, I usually notice those things, but the other people don't really notice those things. Um, and here is another... Uh, overall set I chose to just sew in a button on one side because I could not find the other strap I did not know what happened to it but um, this one does unbutton still just like the other ones the end is sewn into the seam and then I have zigzagged over this end the edge because this is a cotton material and then I did wind up quilting across this portion, but this portion still comes unbuttoned because I just sewed the button directly to the quilt. What is going on with my threads? Anyway, so let's just keep 
moving on down uh i really liked this is a pocket off that same denim pair of uh, jeans from before and i zigzagged around the edge and now you still have the little pocket in there um so let's this we're moving towards a themed kind of themed area well that first part was kind of themed because if you know it's the big bunny and everything and the for my first easter so it was kind of eastery themed um and then this one you can see is a very fourth of july kind of theme um this was a bib that i cut out and sewed then i sewed this little this is the atlanta falcon falcon emblem and uh, i just stitched that on top of all of these patriotic looking things and then there's the first birthday and a little cupcake uh, pattern uh, then we move on to fall and you have turkey and their big Clemson uh, football fans which footballs in the fall usually and then we have uh, Halloween themed and you can see this was a little onesie it has a Batman emblem on it and it had these this chiffony ruffly stuff at the bottom which i kept some of that most of that got cut out but i still think it gives a feel of what it was like before my bow did get stuck in the seam and i had to sew around that a little bit but uh otherwise i think i think it turned out pretty cute uh this is another area of ruffles and this one overlays another fabric you can see up under there um there and here is the little pair of jeans okay i cut off the whole front of these jeans and i just zigzag stitched them right onto this panel i created with two and a half inch strips and the front part this is still open and you can still stick your hands in the pockets they could unbutton this if they wanted to um i just left that open because i thought that would be fun uh, for the little girl and the pants the little legs at the bottom are still open but the part that would would ravel or fray as you can see it's, it's gonna ravel some anyway with just a zigzag stitch but that that zigzag stitch will hold it in place good um, and it really this this was a very lightweight denim compared to the overalls that I did that I had that which is why I didn't put them in there they were more of a heavyweight denim um, and that would have just weed down the a lot so move along we've got some St. Patrick's Day and then you can go we keep going down we've got uh, Valentine's Day and moving right on into Christmas um, and this bib uh, is that even in there there this bib is overlaying the border again it is the same trick I used on the lace border I just sewed to a certain point, skipped, sewed on the other side, and then flipped this out and stitched it down on top. So, um, <clears throat> and then the last panel, we've got more ruffles, and there's lots of, there were lots of Mickey and Minnie uh, shirts. And something that I noticed that I thought was very funny, because this was from some leggings that went with this shirt. But I did not intentionally plan that. That just happened. It happened to land just below the shirt that it went with. That's really neat to me. Um, I don't know what else I could show you about this quilt. That's that's pretty much all the tricks and stuff I did. Here's some more of the another corner of that legging binding border. That worked out really well. Uh, I wasn't sure how that was going to work out because I've never done that before, but I like the way that turned out. Um, so, let's look at the back. And the back is just a combination of this. She, the little girl's favorite color is orange, which is why I use the orange borders. And I have the orange polka dot and some plain orange on the back. And then I also, if I can get it turned around, that one blanket that I talked about using in the back, I put it right in the center uh, and sewed it right into the back pieces. Where's the... There we go. You can see it has her name on it still. So that is in the back panel. 
uh, right in the center at the top. Uh, I did not wind up using the receiving blanket that came from the hospital. It just did not match with the backing fabric. I really didn't like the way it looked. I liked it with the orange and then this panel. Um, so I didn't get to use everything in that box, but I did use just about everything in that box. I have a huge brown box full of trimmings left. And then I have a, one of those plastic bins full of the other things left over from these clothes. I mean, there were just so many clothes. But I am happy to be finished with this. Um, if you have any questions about some things I did that I didn't show or, um, or uh, you want to see more about it, just let me know in the comments below. I will also link to the blog post that's going along with this and the other tutorials. Um, that's it for this baby clothes quilt tutorial. If you would like to see, uh, tutorials for some other, something else, just let me know. If you see something on my blog that you'd like to see a video tutorial of, let me know. I'll see if I can make that happen. Um, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I will see y'all later.